Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be taking you through how to create an assignment right here in Canvas. So go ahead, open up your Canvas module and follow along. Now the first thing I want you to do is go to the announcement tab on the left side that says assignments. Um, typically when you hit your Canvas you're going to go to your homepage, which I have already talked about how to create if you didn't check out that video I'll link it in the cards up here for you as well but we're gonna work on assignments now so the thing you want to consider is how do you want to grade your students here is an example of how I graded one of my most recent classes that started face-to-face -face and then how to go to online because of our recent situation if you're watching this in March 2020 now a great example for an assignment is going to be a midterm or a final exam and I'm going to go over exams and quizzes in the next module because I want to keep these separate for you so they don't get too long. So another assignment that you can do is going to be research papers, reflection papers, or some type of content that you want them to fill in for you. This is a great way for you to do essays, um, reflection papers, an analysis paper of some sort, something that they turn into you and you grade. So a good example is a research paper. So I always do a research paper in my lecture courses. Um, here's an example and then I'll show you how to do it. I have all of the information for the paper in here, links to MLA format, example papers, exactly how I want them to go about writing it processes to help them stay on track, how many points they are, and I assign it to everyone, and they have to upload a PDF. Another example that you can do is I have them do analysis paperwork for my performance-based classes. So they have to create all of this analysis paperwork over the song or the scene or, or whatever they're presenting where they have to answer all of this in a paper and upload it as a PDF document. Another option that you have is going to be doing assignments like introducing yourself to the class. This can be a discussion post that I covered in the last lecture, uh, the last video that I did. I'll link that one up in the cards for you here as well. But it needs to be something that they're going to turn in. So don't think discussions. Think about some other way that you want to grade them so that they can learn the content. Now this is how it's going to look for you when you first start up your assignments. It's not going to have anything in here. If you just take a second and look over, if your assignment has this I with a line through it, that means there's either no content, meaning you have created no assignments yet, or that it's not visible to the students. So down here, for example, this is quizzes, but it says it's not, I have disabled it and it's not visible to the students. You want to go into your settings and you want to enable it so it's viewable to the students. And I did an example of settings too as well in the last um, episode, but you just go down to the settings here, go into your navigation tab, and here's what they see and here's what they don't see. So I would want to take quizzes and I would want to enable it and it pops it up here. So this is what the students see. Make sure that they're seeing all the ones that you want. So that will fix your problem with the eye being closed on the left side, the line through it. Make sure you click save at the very bottom and you are set to go. So they'll see it in their bar. So let's go and create an assignment together. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do of course is click assignment at the top right button, blue button again, add assignment, click that. And here we are, just like we have in the past tutorials, we're creating almost that page idea. So assignment name, what do you want it to be? Say it's going to be a um, research paper, or say you want it to be a reflection paper, or you want them it to be an analysis paper, okay? And then you would write in here the description of what you want it to be, give full details of what you want it to describe, what you want them to include, but remember, keep it simple, keep it in bullet point format and basic steps that they can go through. Again, if you want to click to a link here as an example, you want to include a website as an example, you just pop it in here. So say I want to link to um, the Met Opera right now is showcasing all of their content for free. If you're watching this in March 2020, you could have them watch a video um, from the Met and you would click Met Opera, you would describe it, you could highlight this, copy the website, 
paste it in here, click insert link, and all they'll do is click on Met Opera. This will turn blue and be underlined. If you want to put in a video for them and you want them to watch, there's some wonderful content too right now about um, a virtual library tour that many public libraries are creating online. If it's on YouTube, you could just click the YouTube link, embed the source or Vimeo or any other video link, or you can link the website here and tell them to watch the video and then to write a paper about it. Whatever it is, you would describe it in this area right here, just like we have in the past. How many points do you want it to be? And what type of assignment is it going to be? Now you can create different types of assignment groups if you want to. Maybe you want it to be a, an assignment group that is going to be specific to your class. Try to remember to keep it clean, organized, and again, put this back into all of your modules. So they're not clicking in and out. And I'll show you that example here in a second at the very end. Display the grade as, um, what do you want it to be? Percentage? Do you want it just to be a pass fail? A lot of schools are doing that now, pass or fail. Points, letter grade, your options are here. I've noticed that a lot of students really like to see everything in the percentage. So I always do percentage because then they see, did I make a 90? Did I make an 80? It's, it's easier for them to understand it. If you want, you can always click don't add it into their final exam, but if you're trying to get an assessment for them to get a grade, this is a great way to do it. Now here's an important part. How do you want them to submit their assignment to you? Do you want them to do it online, on paper, an external, external tool, or no submission? If you're teaching online, you want it to be online. Now how do you want them to submit it? Do you want them to do a text entry which means a text box is going to pop up for them and they have to type in that box that, that Canvas is providing for them. Or do you want a website where they have to submit a website to you that they've created? I've never done that one before, so that's gonna be a new one for me. Um, media recordings, this is really amazing if you are in a performance-based class where they are going to upload a recording of them for the assignment. If you're doing a performance-based class, this would be really great to have them record and upload their song or them playing their instrument um, or them doing their speech for class. So this is how you would want to have it uploaded. You want to click that so they know how they're uploading the file. Or do you want a file upload, meaning a document or a PDF? What I have discovered is that many students don't realize what a PDF is just yet. I don't restrict the upload file though because if they upload it as a doc file or a pages file, I just write back to them and say, could you please up upload it as a PDF? That way they're not counted late. Again, trying to be accessible and understand that many students don't really know how to take online classes yet. But I tell them in the breakdown, please upload a PDF file and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, plagiarism, you have a lot of different options here. Um, Turnitin, which is a plagiarism tool. Some schools have it, some schools don't. Um, it will allow you to, it'll take you through a program that will show you how to um, see if it's been, if the student has plagiarized anything. If you're just starting off for your first time, I would say don't even worry about that. Just get the students, get up, get uploaded and get your students used to doing online. Show reports to students. How do you want them to see it? Do you want them to see it immediately? Um, your choice. Um, also, don't worry about it being a group assignment unless it's doing a group of people together. Uh, do you want them to have peer reviews? I've never done this before actually, but if you want students, especially if you're in an undergrad or graduate course, do you want them to do peer reviews for each other? That could be a really great way to get them to talk to each other. Um, also, who are you going to assign it to? Everyone in the class, typically. What is the due date? And then when is the window of time going to be available where they can complete it? So say you want it done by a week from today, which is the 27th. I always do 11.59 p.m. It just works for me. I give them the entire evening. Um, I give them a, a window of time. So it's due that day. It's due on the 27th which I'll pick the same time here. I want those to match. 
but when do how long time how long of a time period do I want them to have remember online students online teaching is different than face to face I would say give them a really good window to turn it in in case something happens their internet goes down they want to turn it in early they're going to procrastinate and turn it in late give them a window of time if it's a paper I it depends on how long your semester is but I will allow them to turn it in beginning day one of the semester until the due date I give them a whole time just make sure that it's going to be applicable for your students and it's going to be something that they can complete just give them more than a day you want to allow them to turn in early to turn it in the middle of the time or late just keep that in mind okay so you would put the available from until and then you would click save or if you're ready to publish it for your students and your your shell is published already you could click save and publish and it would pop up and look something like this this is a research paper I had them do your text and everything will be in here I like to give them examples really break it down for them and then all of your information is down here 20 points a file is uploaded now here is an example of how you're going to grade these I wouldn't download the submissions unless you want all of them downloaded to your computer after they go in and they upload it then you can go over to speed grader click speed grader and it's going to pop them all over here for you and you can go through one by one you can read the if it's a paper you can go through and read it really easily and add comments if you want to highlight it and leave a comment and say great job or consider this is a little this was not incorrect maybe try this you know whatever you want um, I actually want to trash that because uh, this class has ended. <laughs> I don't want her to see that and go, what? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to trash it. Um, and then you can grade it over here and you can write comments to them as well. Another great option you have is when you're grading, you can upload a file or you can actually upload an audio or a video file down here by just clicking on these buttons and you can give them a face-to-face -face response versus just text which is really amazing. Okay, so say you wanna do something where you wanna upload a, you want them to upload a video. The only other difference is, is that when you go to et, when you go to click on how you want them to upload, you would just click on the bottom to do a, um, a, a uh, media recording, and then it would allow them to upload a audio or a video file. So you want to make sure you're clear about how they're submitting this assignment. Now, after you're making your assignments, you want to really keep in mind the idea of modules. So after you make an assignment, make sure that you are putting it within each module and where that is going to fall. So say they are reading all of these lectures and then they're going to do a discussion and then they're going to, one of the assignments between this discussion and quiz is to write a reflection or to create an analysis. You wanna make sure that you list that in between these so that they're staying within a module and they're not going to have to jump back and forth between assignments and other things that you want them to complete. It really just keeps it nice and organized as you work through and it keeps your classroom kind of organized as well. I hope this video is helping you. If you need any other, if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below so that anybody else can see the answers. And if you need any other video tutorials, put them in the links below as well. If you like this video and it was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content, click the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you know when they come out. All right. Happy teaching, friends. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.